Welcome to NinjaCast, a photography podcast powered by Studio Ninja, the world's highest rated business management app built specifically for photographers. Listen and learn as the most successful photographers on the planet share their knowledge to help you transform every element of your photography business. Here's your host, Sally Shaw. Hi guys, welcome to NinjaCast. Today I'm joined by Andy Hardy. I'm super excited to have Andy on the show today. He's going to share how to make your film stand out from the crowd, the techniques that he uses to do that, and his best kept marketing secrets. I'm really excited for this one, so let's dive right in. Hello. Hey, hey, Sally. How are you? I'm good. How's it going? Yeah, really well. Thank you. Really, really well. We just did our hardcore Melbourne lockdown. Uh-huh. And um, yeah, it was, it, was, it was big. I mean, you guys probably experiencing a bit heavier now. But yeah, we, we did the Melbourne one. So it was, it was, a, it was real doozy. <laughs> it's, much, it's much better for you guys over there now, isn't it? Oh, I mean, we've just moved out of Melbourne and up to, we've just moved out of Melbourne and up to Byron Bay. So we're living the dream in a bubble up here. It's like nothing ever happened in a way. But in Melbourne, it was very much apparent. It was very real. It was very Mm. real for for a long time. You know, like you'd go into restaurants, anything, and there would just be, you know, the face masks as a constant reminder. And then like only being allowed to go 5Ks from your house for exercise or anything for like an hour a day, whatever, that was pretty heavy. Yeah, so, definitely. Yeah, but anyways, we've, we've, we've come to the other side, I guess. And um, Yeah, no, we're having fun up here now. So we're, we're living the dream up in, up in Byron and it's been just beautiful weather and yeah, it's been really, really good. To, total <laughs> lifestyle change as well. So. <laughs> I'm so jealous. We're like in the middle of winter and it's raining outside right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's a total tip. Yeah, that's what happens when you're living down under on the other side of the world, hey? I know. I should uh, I should definitely move one day. The UK life is not the way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm sure it has its perks. Yeah, it's not too bad. It's not too bad. So, Andy, for our listeners that perhaps don't know about you yet, can you divulge a little bit more about yourself and talk about your business and um, perhaps your journey so far? Yeah, so um, guys, thanks for having me on for starters. Thanks for having me on the studio on the Ninja Cast. Pretty stoked to be here. It's um, yeah, it's been really cool. I actually um, will just divulge and share a short, sweet story. But I think about I went with one of my good buddies, Jesse Hisco. He was uh, one of my best friends and mentors in Melbourne. Uh, taught me everything I knew about wedding photography. Um, up until a point and I remember sit, going down for a meeting with Jesse was like oh I know about this new thing called Studio Ninja and we went down and met Chris in the in the Richmond office uh-huh. about seven or eight years ago and um yeah it was like to to sort of meet him and then see how far it's come now and and to be supported by Studio Ninja the whole time has been absolutely awesome so thank you guys for that and um yeah I'm stoked to be here. We've but um <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, um yeah, my name's Andy, Andrew Hardy. Um I'm a filmmaker and photographer. I'm mostly doing commercial work now, mostly focusing in the commercial sphere. Um I have a production company called Feel and Films. Um and basically, yeah, I also have done a whole bunch of weddings, and that was kind of like I just mentioned, sort of that was back in the day. I did about six years of kind of shooting weddings and And, um, yeah, traveling sort of up and down the east coast of Australia and being lucky enough to sort of being flown to a bunch of different places all over the world to shoot destination weddings. And and I've had an extremely fortunate career in doing that and and kind of just got to a point where I was like, I wanted a new challenge. And I personally felt like I, I was getting not stale, but I felt like I just wanted something that was new and challenging and, um, just, you know, that, that new excitement of like, just building something new. And so I decided to like build a production company. And so, yeah, now basically we take on clients, um, a a variety of clients, but we're really um, approaching that kind of like, 
I don't know, we're really lucky to approach that top tier of kind of commercial clients where we've started working with Sony Alpha and Mini Cooper and, and um, we're just uh, in, in talks with a pretty exciting mountain bike company um, that that product and film should actually be out by the time listeners are listening to this. So that'll be pretty cool to, uh, for people to see. But, but yeah, we've been really loving and it's been really exciting. I feel like, you know, my kind of eleva- elevator pitch is like, you know, we basically solve problems for brands that have communications issues, you know, so if they're trying to communicate a prob- uh, an issue, like whether they're, they have a product that's solving a problem for people, you know, we're helping them solve that problem of like communicating that to the market and, and creatively finding, finding a way to do that. So that's what we do at Feel and Films. Fantastic. Well, do you know, I obviously had a good look over your website before we chatted today and I was blown away. So for anyone listening to this that is like feeling films, I've not heard of them, go and check it out. Like get ready to have your mind blown. It's ridiculous how immense this guy's work is. So I had a full on (laughs) moment. I was like messaging Chris and everything like, oh my God. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, thank you so much. I definitely can't take credit for all of it. I mean, feeling the reason why I started a production company was that like, you know, I got to a point in my career where, you know, in order to produce this sort of level of work, it was like, it's no longer just me, it's a team of people. And it takes, you know, teamwork to make the dream work. It's like an age old saying, but it is so true, especially when you get into like productions. And, you know, I'm, um, yeah, I have a like small team that I work with super close, um, uh, an amazing editor, Jeff, and um, a DOP, Jared, that I work with all the time. And, uh, and yeah, we're, soon have some exciting news coming out hopefully by the time people listen to this about that as well but um yeah basically like you know those guys just we pull together all the projects together with like a variety of different people so but it's been awesome and it's been really cool to sort of you know be able to foster that that team and bring people together to to you know work on projects together it's like you're really living the dream when you just get to work with your mates all the time, you know? <laughs> 100%, absolutely. So what made you choose film? Like, let's cast back a little bit. And, you know, what did you do before that? What brought you into it in terms of, you know, why film over photography or what made you gravitate to that side of things? Yeah, totally. So um, I guess you got to go back to like in my wedding days was like, you know, um, I think I've shot well, I shot sort of, you know, when I was shooting weddings, I shot well over a hundred weddings between my own and shooting like second shooting with people. And I was just like, just loving it, shooting so much. Like I'm a real people person. So I love getting to go and hang out with a hundred different people every week. And that was like, yeah. I was like, this is, I'm living my best life. Is great. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but back then was, I actually studied three years at photographic studies college in Melbourne Mm -hmm. and, um, about a year in, um, you know, I started second shooting weddings for people and I met my mentor and one of my best mates, Jesse Hisco. And, and I learned so much from him. And then he just introduced me to so many other people in the wedding industry. So a year or so went by, a couple of years went by, you know, I think I'd graduated uni and it was probably like, you know, a year out or something. I was lucky enough to shoot all these different beautiful, awesome weddings up and down the coast and, and had some incredible experiences and, and really beautiful, wonderful clients that I'm super grateful to have gotten to work with. Um, but one time, basically, Jesse just said to me, he said, hey, man, like, I've got this couple. They're, like, really cool couple, whatever, and, and like, they're just having a small, intimate wedding here in Melbourne, um, but they seem really rad. Like, can you, do you do video? And I was like, yeah, I can do video, no problem. I couldn't do video. I had no (laughs) idea. And so he was like, oh yeah, the wedding's in like three weeks. And so I'm like back on my computer, how to do video. (laughs) And like just YouTubed the absolute, you know, just like YouTube so much stuff about it and just went on a spree of learning like how to do it. And we'd done like a module, like heart, like a semester at university on like film, on like making films making videos and using Premiere and stuff. And so I self-taught myself all this stuff, shot this awesome wedding in Melbourne. It was just super tight knit, just both the folks, uh, one of the brother, the brothers of um, the, the groom was there. And that was it. They just had marriage set, uh, registry and we shot the wedding and it just turned out really beautiful. And basically they said, hey, um, do you want to come to Bali? We're actually having another wedding and we've, we're flying in all of our friends from China and all of our friends from university in Melbourne to come to Bali for this wedding where we're going to get married in a glass church on the edge of a cliff. 
and we want you to shoot video for it because you did a really amazing job. Like, can you come? Will you come? And I was like, let me just check my schedule. Yes, I can definitely be there. So basically my second ever wedding film was like one of the most incredible destination weddings, like just you could imagine. Yeah. And, and so after that, I just sort of went on this ball, like super snowball effect of like booking destination wedding films. You know, we shot like films in, in Thailand and Bali and like, you know, we were fortunate enough to shoot a wedding in Kerala in India, um, in Canada in, in the States, like sort of just fluting about all over the place shooting wedding films. And my love for video just grew and grew and grew. And, and um, yeah, and it was just kind of this way. And I think, you know, that's where the name Feel and Films came from in my commercial sphere was like, I fell in love with that feeling that you can create through cinema, which is like, and I'm not saying you can't do it in a photograph, but I think that, you know, from, you know, I love watching movies and stuff and that feeling you get when you like the hairs stand up on your neck or something and you get that, that like, you know, the pins and needles kind of effect of like watching something where visuals and music connect so much that you can't help but feel something from it. Yeah, absolutely. I must admit, as a, I've been a photographer for eight, nine years now. Um, and the last two years or so, I've started um, doing highlight films for my couples. So I don't really do, I wouldn't, I don't go out currently and do like a full wedding just filming it, but I will hybrid the two together. Um, mm. And I love film. There's something about it, like you say, where it just, it make, gives you goosebumps and, you know, you put that film together and you, you know, time it just right with the music, with the, you know, with scenes changing and things and you just look at it and go, oh my God. <laughs> yeah. You time out that last clip to that like final beat and then color grade it and you hit the export and you're just like, yeah. this is going to be good. And you know it's good yourself when you watch it and stuff that you shot and you edited is giving you goosebumps and you're like, oh, <laughs> if this is doing it for me and I've just watched this 20 times while I've been editing it, yeah. like this is definitely going to do it for other people. And there's yeah. just something in that, like being able to share that experience and that feeling with other people is like definitely drives me to keep creating for sure. Absolutely. So obviously for you, you know, amazing that you literally shared that you had no clue what to do with a wedding film and yet you took one on. So mm. What are your tips for people that are thinking, I really want to start getting into filming. How do I, how do I even start? Where do I begin? Totally. So that's a really good question. I think that like, you know, I mean, there's, there's really nothing better than just trying and just getting out there and just like hitting record. And like, whether it's just like you're shooting your friends, like, you know, for me, I guess photography all started was like I was photographing my friends like skateboarding and riding BMX when I was like young, you know, running around like in high school and stuff. And that's how photography started for me. And then filmmaking, I mean, I really threw myself in the deep end uh, <laughs> with like committing to a full wedding film. Um, so I wouldn't highly recommend that. I wouldn't say go out and just do that straight off the bat. I was really lucky in a sense of like, it just actually panned out. <laughs> um, and I mean, in my career, there's been plenty of films that haven't panned out where, you know, not so much professionally for clients, clients out there, please, if you're listening, <laughs> yeah. that doesn't happen often. <laughs> but, um, you know, I guess I think just getting, picking up the camera and hitting record and like, thinking less about all the gear. And I mean, that's something that I've been talking about like at amazing camp and conference uh, field trip that I've been sort of traveling out to and, you know, sort of managed to just snowball into again. I went and shot a film and then ended up teaching video there for five years. Wow. But like one of the key things with like any of my video stuff that I've ever taught or shown anyone is just like stop thinking about all of the gear and just like focus on the story and creating and like pick up the camera and like, you know, Sony mirrorless cameras now are just so, so incredible where, you know, you've got in-body stabilization, you know, most mirrorless cameras now have that and you can run around and shoot and emulate moves that you would otherwise need all this equipment, like a jib, like some cinema jib where you want to raise the camera up or do a yeah. slider move from side to side. Like you can do that with your hands, you know, and a bit of practice, a good camera strap, you know, kind of getting that three points of contact, having the camera strap around your your shoulder or neck or whatever, and then your two hands on it and being able to focus and move your body and just, just practice makes perfect. You know, no one ever learned to ride a bike by watching a video. So, 100%. or maybe they did. I don't know. Maybe I'm un <laughs> uneducated on that. No, I think, I think doing is best, definitely the best way to learn hundred percent. So for those out there that may be listening that are already videographers, but are looking to you 
take their work to the next level. They want that wow factor, those epic shots that really stand out from the crowd. What would you say they can do? Totally. That is, so that, that's actually one of my favorite things is like watching people's style develop, I think is like, you know, for getting started, I think there's nothing that beats going out and doing. And I think that's a bit cliche to say, but like, honestly, like, you know, I think, like I said, like stepping back from thinking, I need all the gear, I need the stabilizer and the mic and whatever. Like if you have a camera, even if you have an iPhone, like these things are incredible. You can shoot 4K video on this and like, you know, and a hundred frames a second. If you want to do slow motion stuff, like you can do it on your phone. And I've seen incredible, like, you know, films made on iPhone, mm-hmm. but that next level. And I think this is the hardest part. It's like, it, it's like learning to ski or snowboard. It's like that first part you're like, Oh, you know, that, that happens really quickly, that progression. But then that next level of like taking it to the next level and being like, Oh, you know, for people to walk away from the film or like some people see, you know, something that I've created for a brand or whatever and have messaged me and been like, yo, did you make this thing for this company? And I'm like, yeah, I actually did. And like, that's super cool to have like my style be recognized by somebody so pr- prominently that like they kind of look at it and go, that has to be an Andy film yeah. or Andy must have had a hand in that, you know? Yeah. But I think to get to that point, it's just, you know, it's one, it's lots of hard work. You've got to put in that 10,000 hours. I think that I've definitely, if not, done that I'm very close I must be (laughs) (laughs) there's been a lot of time in the editing suite and a lot of time shooting but yeah developing your style I mean we have a whole exercise on this inside of my course which I won't dive into too much right now on the style finder exercise and there's a number of ways that you can do it and I think just like examining the work that you really love that you've shot before you know like I do yearly kind of like portfolio reviews of myself you know like cutting a showreel every year of like the footage that I've cut, Um, looking at rejigging my portfolio on my website, like every year, you know? Um, And I get a little bit slack on that sometimes, but you know, mostly I would say the longest it's been before updating stuff is like 18 months. And I'll like really examine what I'm doing and being like, Oh, okay. Like that was fun. That was cool. Like that looks amazing. Like, how did I do that? Why did I do that? And like looking at all those little things, you know, and, and then just kind of picking apart that stuff and, and recognizing like what it is in your work that you actually like and what it is in your work that you want to create more of. And I think that helps like r- just so much, especially with video because you, there's so many more pieces of the puzzle, you know, like what music were you listening to when you created that? Like, are you listening to something different now? Like, you know, how are you handling the camera? Are you actually shooting all handheld stuff or are you using like a lot of stabilizers and, gimbals or tripods to like shoot stuff, you know? And so not only examining that and moving forward and kind of being like, Oh, I love that. I'm going to keep doing that. But also going, Oh man, you learn like one of the things for me right now is like, I haven't shot anything on a tripod for a really long time, you know? And thinking, geez, maybe I should like actually go out and give that a crack for a little while Mm -hmm. and just kind of keep expanding in those different fields and seeing what really works. Mm-hmm, definitely and you know you've you've said there already you know your films are so distinct you you can 100 percent look at them and say you know that was andy so how did you get to that point how did you you know you certainly i presume didn't start out with that distinct definite style so what was the in between i think the in between was just lots and lots of films <laughs> you know like i think um you know, on the back end of our Vimeo, we have like 340 something finished pieces, you know, and then in our portfolio, we have 10, Yeah. you know, like if you go on the website, there's like 10 films there. Yeah. And so there was a lot of experimentation in between. And, and like I just said, my new thing, like that I realized the other day was like, geez, maybe I need to like start setting up some more tripod shots and like Wes Anderson style, like uh, letting the action play out inside of the wide frame. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, or like, you know, whatever that may be. But yeah, basically in that in between, there was lots of experimentation and lots of like, you know, re-examining what I'm doing and and also like lots of different genres of photography. Like I know, you know, like people, you know, another sort of cliche, you hear this all the time, but like your personal work drives your like, you know, your actual work. Mm-hmm. And so I think like looking at that from, you know, stepping back and kind of looking at that and uh, especially on my own experience and work has been there's just been so many different genres. Like I've shot everything from weddings to like other sort of, you know, mishmash of events 
to like food photography, a car commercial or three car commercials now, and then like everything in between action sports, you know, experimented with underwater, like just so much experimentation and then finding that common thread. And I think that common thread probably for me is like really that, um, you know, making sure that I always mix in that handheld feel. And I think that like, you know, as much as I'm stepping more into directing now and like less handling of the camera, uh, I still feel so connected to holding the camera and I still feel so connected to watching handheld footage and the way that someone moves their body, you know, and paying attention to like, you know, is this an intense moment? Like the camera should be a little bit more shaky and move about a bit more, you know, or is this a really calm flowing still moment or is it intensely building? Like maybe you should use a gimbal and kind of like slowly push into that person but like thinking about all of those different things, I think has like culminated to probably my style and just being really conscious of like, what are you trying to achieve? You know, what's the feeling that you're actually trying to make for the viewer. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a, that's a huge part of the lesson. There's, and there's no way to just like, there's no shortcut to doing that, but just like, you know, learning those techniques as you go, mashing them together and being like, Oh, that works. And oh, that's, that's like, I really connect with how I did that. Yeah. It's, I guess it's a lot of um, kind of working out what resonates with you, isn't it? If your, if your films feel like you and you, you know, you look at them and think there's a bit of me in that film, then that, I guess that's what, what it kind of boils down to, isn't it? Totally, totally. But then it's also a little bit soul crushing when you're working commercially with like, yeah. uh, you know, creative agencies or art directors that like, you know, and I shouldn't say this because we're currently working with an amazing crew in Sydney called New Colony that like have totally just been like giving us the keys to the kingdom and they're like, hey, we trust you. Like, here's like what we need and here's the story arc. Go for your life, son. And we're just like, oh my gosh, this is the dream. <laughs> but then you have other commercial clients where it's just like, you know, it's a bit soul crushing because you're like, I put this piece of me in this film and I love it so much. And then they're like, well, actually it doesn't work and you have to like kill that part. And you're like, but that's the best bit, you know? <laughs> so you can't, you can't get too attached to it, especially commercially. And I think, um, I think that's why there's like a bit of an allure to like, you know, creating wedding films and creating wedding, uh, you know, artwork mm. at a wedding. Like that's essentially like what wedding photography has become. And, you know, that was one of the reasons why I got into it. Like I think I, think I, I turned a print at the Australian Photography Awards and I was like, holy moly, what is that? That is like art at a wedding. I've never seen that before. I always thought wedding photography was like your classic gown down the stairs, whatever. And some people make that look really beautiful, yeah. given. But I remember turning this print, it was like Dan O'Day. And I was like, all right, anybody <laughs> yeah. backstage? I was like, does anybody know Dan? Who knows Dan? <laughs> Somebody introduced me to this Dan geezer. And so someone actually introduced me. And I just bugged him for like two years. And then a year after that, he was like, hey, you're actually pretty good. You should come and shoot weddings for my company, All Grown Up. And so I shot for All Grown Up and worked with Dan for years. And now he's like a really good friend. But he was one of the reasons like realizing that you could create art at yeah. a wedding. But yeah, I don't know. It's an interesting like experience of how. Yeah, I, I think I've gone a little bit sideways on that one. No, but, that was fantastic. I can... Uh... That's a fun little side story for you. And, <laughs> yeah. and I think the point of the story was just like, yeah, you know, commercially speaking, you know, sometimes you have that little piece of you crushed in that film, but, you know, you just got to keep trying and putting that out there. And, and like I said, I, I think that. that's the allure for creating that wedding artwork is like having that freedom to do so, you know? Yeah. I think with weddings as well, it is all about the feeling, isn't it? It's about the emotion. It's about the story that unfolded. And it, it, that kind of gels with that, that you are putting a piece of you into that and, and, you know, telling it from how you saw it kind of thing. So yeah, definitely. So in terms of techniques then, Andy, what type of techniques do you use? Does it differ quite massively when you're shooting, you know, when you were shooting a wedding to how you shoot commercially now? Yes, yes and no. So like, I think um, a part of what I sort of do really well is, <laughs> not to sound too on myself with that one, but, you know, I think a part of what, I think a part of what I achieve for, you know, my clients, whether it's commercially or within weddings is like, you know, being kind of ambidextrous with the camera, you know, we're like when I was shooting weddings, 
one of the things that, you know, I evolved to do most often for clients was shooting photography and film at the same time. And there was a number of things that kind of like, you know, that why that came about. Like one of, a, one of them was like being on both ends of the spectrum where I come from a t- photography background and had shot a hand, like not just a handful, a whole bunch of photography only weddings, like as in where I was just shooting photos and then I'd also shot a bunch of uh, weddings where I was just shooting video and having bad experiences with both where I was like whoa these guys want a really natural organic style where like I'm like a documentary photographer but also like you know helping guide the story in a beautiful way and kind of like being you know present and connected but like shooting in this fly on the wall style which is what is super popular and everybody loves and and I think that's really, that's really cool. But then when you have a videographer that you're working with, that's like, now look down at the rings and out the window and back <laughs> at me. And you're just like, how am I meant to do my yeah. natural job? <laughs> and like the reason why these people have booked me, like how am I meant to do that? Mm. So that became really difficult. And then vice versa, like I'd be shooting natural films. And then if the photographer is posing the couple all the time and not letting the action just naturally unfold in front of them, then how am I meant to make like a cinematic piece of that when it's a bunch of people standing in nice light in different positions around the day? So we started shooting photo and video weddings and that just like taught me so much. Like where, you know, I got, you know, the first couple were very nerve wracking and you're like, oh my goodness, how am I going to shoot the kiss in video and on stills? And we figured out a way, by the way. <laughs> but, um, you know, me and a second shooter, another multimedia shooter, would go out and shoot the wedding day, stills and video, and clients loved it. Instead of having, like, uh, you know, instead of having a media circus where the media team is outnumbering the couple, like, that's not comfortable, right? Like, that happens all the time. Two videographers, two photographers. That's a normal thing. Mm-hmm. And I just, I didn't like the vibe of that, you know? And so we just started just me and a second me and uh, my assistant, my main shooter, um, and, and we would go out and shoot and like just both of us shoot stills and video. And I've carried that into my commercial work. And that has been a big key, I think, is like, you know, growing to realize that like, you know, we've got these awesome cameras that can now pretty much everyone can basically shoot 4K, can also shoot 50 frames, 100 frames a second. You can make a cinematic reel of just about everything, anything with that. Mm -hmm. and so like using the tool that you've got to its full potential and being like wow okay i can do this the camera can do this i can do this and like learning how to do that and adapt and then yeah that's just carried over into our commercial work where now you know we're shooting for clients and it's like you know they're hiring us as a production company to do like all of their media stuff you know like we're doing a number of different jobs on in the one day it's cost effective for them it's great for us because sometimes it's like doing two jobs in one day, mm-hmm. but you know, and, and it's, it's just like makes an ease of kind of like service where, you know, the whole package lines up, the style is the same, the photography and the visuals, we grade them the same, the, you know, and, and just the whole experience is just much more fluid. So I think that's been a key thing for me in terms of like technical aspect for sure. Amazing. Fantastic. So for listeners out there, you've touched briefly, you know, that you don't need all the gear. You don't need to go out and you don't need to spend all this money on getting everything that you think you need all at once. For people out there that, you know, they may already be in video or they may maybe looking to start doing videos, what would your advice to be, be to them about equipment specifically? Man, equipment specifically, I think pairing it back. Like I think I, I, I think that's probably like one of the big mistakes that I see often is like, people jumping in and being like, you know, uh, like, and, and I was, I'm guilty of this as well. Like that wedding that I told you about before that first ever wedding in Melbourne, my first ever wedding film. I remember walking around Melbourne from like, and if any of you guys listening are from Melbourne, we were like from the marriage registry in Melbourne, which is like far kind of East side of the city. We walked from there to the crown casino where they had lunch, which is like quite a ways. And then to um, another park, we walked to like, Fitzroy Gardens or something like that. And so like all up, this is like kilometers and kilometers of walking. And I had a duffel bag with like, this is before gimbals. I had like a duffel bag with a glide cam, a monopod, a tripod. Oh my gosh. uh, You know, like so much and like three different microphones, 
like so much stuff. And, you know, and I think doing that and then like slowly shooting more. And, and then I even like traveled to, to Bali to shoot their other wedding with that amount of gear. And then kind of like, it wasn't until after that, like a couple of wedding films later where I was like, all right, you know, I remember just going, you know what? I'm going to just see if I can shoot this whole day on a 50 mil. And I did it. And then I was like, well, that is like the best thing I've probably ever made, like wedding or not. Mm -hmm. And just like stop thinking about like all of these different things and just being like, oh, I have a camera. I have like two batteries in my pocket. I have a 50 mil. I'm going to just go out and shoot something. Mm -hmm. And just like focusing so much about less of that. And then and you do that so much that then the camera and, and the lens becomes like a part, an extension of my body. Now, like if I've got a 50 mil on a photo camera or a video camera, I can walk out and I can be like, I know exactly. And I know photographers out there listening, of course, are going to have that same feeling. Like, yes, I know that. My 24 mil, I know what I'm getting in the frame. If I'm five feet away from you, I'm getting everything. I'm getting the roof. I'm getting the sparklers that are going off. I'm getting whatever. Mm -hmm. So I think just like allowing yourself to become second nature with your gear in terms of like holding it, using it and just pairing it right back. And for me, that was going back to just like, like I said, you know, one, maybe two lenses. Like I was using like a wide angle, like a 24 mil and a 50 mil. And that was my game changing move was just going those two lenses. Mm -hmm. I had a camera, a microphone if I needed to get audio, sometimes not a microphone. If I was just kind of aiming to make cinematic pieces in the morning or something like that. Mm -hmm. Always good to have one though. But I just paired it back to a camera strap and I have this Peak Designs camera strap that I've had for like seven years or something like that from like, you know, it's like so like everything's worn off it and like, you know, everything's kind of like, it's, I've just had it forever. But some a camera strap that you can shorten and lengthen is going to be a game changer because then you can get in those different positions like pulling that camera strap out and having it not just go around your neck and getting all Quasimodo all day, like stretching your neck out, you know, having it go around your body, like under one of your arms and then having those two points of contact and just shooting like that and just see what you can achieve, you know? Definitely. So obviously there's so much information there in terms of the physical shooting and getting your work to a point where you feel that you're happy and that it represents you. All that's amazing to have all that work how do you then get it out to those clients? What are your best kept marketing secrets? <laughs> best kept marketing secrets. I don't know if I am the best person to like talk about, <laughs> about this because I'm currently like undertaking, you know, courses and kind of like doing a bunch of learning about that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but you know what? I think I do have actually a very good valuable piece of advice for this one, actually, come to think of it. <laughs> and it's less technical. It's way less technical than you think. And what it is is that, like, I think throughout my, like, career and time shooting in the last, like, 10 years of my life that has built up to, like, where I am now from, like, day one, at, you know, studying photography to, like, a year in being like, oh, I'm, like, going to quit uni because I'm shooting so many weddings. <laughs> Luckily I didn't know. I'm glad that I didn't because yeah. I did learn a bunch, but you know, in all that, in all that time learning filmmaking over like 10 years was just like, and, and learning kind of just like, you know, how to, how to live and be a creative in uh -huh. the world, you know, that kind of the, the number one thing that helped me, I think was from day dot, you know, like, turning that Dan O'Day print and just being like, someone introduced me to Dan. Like I didn't know who Dan was. And it wasn't until a year later that I was like, Oh, Dan's kind of like the shit, you know? <laughs> and then, and then also like going from that to, you know, getting an opportunity to travel to field trip in the States, you know, like I think Dan, and if anybody doesn't know about yeah, field trip out there, you probably should know about yeah, field trip. Uh, yeah. Field trip is like this insane creative camp where you camp for like four or five days or whatever it is. You go out, like it was in Santa Barbara, it's been in Marfa, Texas, and they've been sort of moving it around. Um, hopefully there's going to be another one soon, COVID and stuff provided. Mm -hmm. But basically, um, you know, Dan was like, hey, uh, Andy, you should come to this thing. Like you're doing awesome videos. Like maybe you can like make a film in exchange for a ticket. And I was just like, yeah, that sounds great. And then uh, my other friend, Ben Murphy, had been before and he was, he was working with Sam Blake, some of you guys may know. And so she was speaking at the event 
and she was bringing Ben and Ben was like, Andy, you should come. You should. And he told Whitney, the owner of the camp as well, like the sort of, you know, the main contact at field trip, Whitney Chamberlain. And, and they both told him about me and was like, Hey, this guy should like come to the camp and like make a film or something. He should just be there. And then randomly one day I had this phone call on my phone and this story is going to make sense in a little second, Go on. <laughs> but I had this phone call on my phone from this American number. And I was like, who's it? I picked up and it was like, Hey, it's Whitney. Uh, are you going to like come to field trip or what? And I was like, Whoa, like, uh, uh, okay. Like very classic Whitney style. Like now I know I've known him for a few years. And, um, what happened was I went to field trip, shot a film and a year later they were like, we want you to come and speak. But I think that whole experience, like the next year I had such imposter syndrome because I was like, whoa, I'm like teaching video next to the people that were the reason I got started making, you know, doing wedding yeah. photography, mm -hmm. you know, like Mike, like I'm looking at the schedule and it was like, Oh, Dan speaking. And then there's like Jonas Peterson and then there's this, and there was like Andy. And I was like, Whoa, <laughs> I should not be, should I be on this list? I don't know. I was like such an imposter. And given I was like giving like a video 101 class, but I was like, whoa. But I think ever since that moment, I've made a really conscious decision to like, no matter who it is that I'm speaking to, is to like speak to them like a human and like connect with everybody on a really human level. Because like, you know, everybody loves fanning out over someone, you get excited and whatever. But like, imagine being that person, imagine putting, putting yourself in that person's shoes, whether you're like, you know, it's the, it's the person at the company that's constantly getting pitched ideas to, you know, or whether it's like, you know, you're like, you know, high up wedding industry people and you're like, just started shooting weddings and you're fanning out over this person because you love their work. Like I urge you all, anyone listening to like talk to everybody like a human being, like they're just like your buddy that you had a coffee with yesterday, mm -hmm. you know? And I've carried that through my whole life. And, and I think from that, I've just had this insane word of mouth. So to roll it back to this marketing thing, like my best marketing tool has been word of mouth. Like I don't think I've gotten any more jobs from anywhere than other than people just going, hey, you should meet Andy. Or like, hey, you should like work with Phelan. Or hey, you should like do this. Andy, you should meet this person. Mm -hmm. But just like having that connection with, with so many people and, and always just thinking about like, you know, like kind of, you know, just having an experience with somebody is an opportunity, not just an opportunity to like maybe get work, but an opportunity to like grow and learn something new, you know? Yeah, definitely. I, do you know, I, it, it makes me smile because there's not many people out there. Someone would hear Dan O'Day's name now and they'd be like, whoa, Dan O'Day. Whereas you were like, find me Dan O'Day. I need to speak to him. Where's Dan at? <laughs> yeah. I remember, I remember it like, I remember it like it was yesterday and we actually caught up like um, a month ago, we were driving up here to Byron and we stopped through Sydney and, and went to a very, <laughs> a very wild industry party um, <laughs> in, in, oh, sorry, we stopped in Canberra where, where Dan and, and Kelly are, who I used to work with, with all grown up and, and, um, and, and so we're hanging out with, with the guys, the old crew, Kelly Tunney and Dan and, um, and we just had a really loose night and we we're talking about it. And I think that first time somebody introduced me to him and he was sitting in like the second row, he was about to start judging and I'm asking him how he was like, how are you getting the, you know, just asking real questions. How are you getting your tones in your images like that? Like, what are you doing? How do you do that? How do you edit like that? You know? And I think he's like, just check out like this curl or something, you know, <laughs> like it's kind of like harming me off in a way. And then, um, you know, years later I discover it's not just as easy as Visco to create that, like, you know, signature look, whatever you're trying to achieve, but, but it was a good starting point and it was good advice to like check out how to, you know, create, closer to like you know that filmic aesthetic or whatever it was that what i was looking for but yeah i've just tried to carry that kind of like approach anyone cold call word of mouth yeah marketing for me has been cold calls and word of mouth like yeah. cold calls have got me a long way <laughs> i love it <laughs> so andy if you could start your entire career all over again is there anything you would do differently look i think um you know and I don't know if there's anyone out there listening to this that's like studied photography, um, you know, and, and, you know, given my career, my uh, sort of my, my, sorry, my degree at photography studies college was invaluable. It was really beautiful experience and I had an amazing time there. 
And ultimately, I probably wouldn't have progressed so much and made the connections that I did if I didn't foster a lot of stuff through Photography Studies College. Mm. But if I was starting again today, then I would be just like, you know, and it's hard to find this stuff when you're getting out there. But, you know, I honestly, like, if I hadn't have gone to uni and I would have just gone to, yeah, field trip for like five mm. years in a row or three years in a row, sorry, like I have learned more at creative camp, at that, at that specific creative camp than probably any other sector of my life. Like I haven't just learned creative stuff. I've learned how to like be a human, mm -hmm. <laughs> like how to be kind, how to like, you know, just, I don't know, how to just, just, <laughs> I, it's so hard to put into words, you know, like how, how much growth has happened there because, you know, it's not just photography and film. It's like, you know, mindfulness classes, meditation, like, you know, manifestation classes, graphic design, photography, film, like they're all a part of it. Like anything creative that you can think about is happening in this space. And I think that now, especially like as creatives, we're probably moving into more of like a, you know, for lack of a better word, like ambidextrous kind of like, plane where you know if you're a photographer someone at some point is going to expect you to do video they're just going to be like you can do video right like they're not going to ask do you they're just going to be like you can do it right because your camera can do it but i think that there's so many life skills learned outside of that with like you know creativity in general whether it's like you know learning little bits of graphic design or just like learning how you know especially for me and if you haven't picked up already my little adhd brain just like flying around all the time how valuable meditating and slowing down can be mm -hmm. and i've tried to make that a big part of my life over the last couple of years but you know i think yeah it's just it, i think that i would just probably look for more focused stuff than doing broader you know and like i said no dissing to to photo studies college and that was a beautiful time but if I was to do it again, I would look at more of that stuff and, and try and, you know, spend my money wisely into a place where I, I could see that kind of exponential growth in, in more than one area, you know? Finding like that hands-on education where it's like bits of everything that you're physically going to be doing day in, day out at the job. <sighs> totally. I think that like I'm, I'm you know, I wish, I wish maybe like, and, and I wish maybe that like, I could have had that experience even growing up. You know, I think that like the way the education system is, is like go into a classroom and learn here. And like, you know, I have some buddies like that went to Steiner school and you're like put into groups of like, Oh, you learn with your hands. Oh, you're in the learning with your hands class. You guys are going to go out and build stuff. Oh, you learn auditory learning. Well, cool. You can go to the classroom. And they're like, I love going to the classroom. You know, for me, I wanted to be outside and I want to be doing something with my hands. I don't want to be going on to like, you know, I don't want people to come into my studio. I want to be like going out into nature shooting stuff. And I want to be like experiencing all these different, you know, different kind of like spaces and challenges and lighting situations. And that really ex excites and challenges me. So, yeah, I think like looking to probably like understand that more about myself and being like, oh, okay, where can I go to learn that way? Whose workshop can I do that's really going to be hands on? Mm -hmm. or you know who teaches in the style that I like you know I think I'd look more at that sort of stuff for sure and if you could add perhaps one final piece of advice that has made a big difference in your life in general business or you know personal life what would that piece of advice be this is a tough one <laughs> that is a tough one that is a really really tough one I mean I feel like um you know I feel like that I kind of already gave it before with that, just like speaking to everyone as a human, you know, be kind and like, you know, just not just treating person. every, <laughs> yeah, just be a good person and, and not just like, Hey, you know, help someone to their car with their groceries. Just like speaking to everyone with that same level of respect and being like, you know, even if you may think you might know more than some person or you might be like more experienced, you can always learn something you know and like even like say the crew that are inside of my filmmaking course moments in a minute little shameless plug there um i'm learning stuff from those guys all the time like i have no problem admitting that like those guys are like hey have you thought about this or like how do i do this and then someone else will jump on the page and be like we have such a cool community and then someone's like hey i actually ran into that problem as well and i thought about doing it this way mm -hmm. and i'm like oh that's actually better than my way <laughs> or like 
you know, like stuff like that happens all the time. And I think, you know, accepting that and just, you know, like I said, speaking to your, your whoever's of, of whatever industry, whether it's music or whatever, like, you know, I had some pretty embarrassing experiences, not embarrassing. I think other people might've found it embarrassing, but at the time I was just like, yeah, I think like, at Splendor in the Grass, like a festival I was shooting here in Australia, like a, a couple of years ago, hanging out with some of my buds who run a really cool festival in Tassie called Party in the Paddock. And, and I was hanging out with them and they were like, oh, this is like such and such. And, and I was like, oh, hey, bro, like, what are you doing here at the festival? Like, what's your, uh, what's your thing or whatever? And I was like, oh, I'm like, I'm, I play in a band. And I was like, oh, which stage did your band play in? It was like, the main stage, I'm like the guitarist from like Violent Soho or something, like some pretty big band. And I was like, oh, cool, man. Like, how's it, how's, the, how's the festival going for you? And everybody else was like, dude, you just like, that was, that's embarrassing. You did, just did that. You didn't know who that person was. Uh-huh. But after this conversation, he like pulled me aside because I talked to him like a normal person. Yeah. Instead of being like, whoa, yo, you're this person, you know, just thinking, oh, you're a human. Let's, okay, cool. Like you're having an experience like I am. Yeah. I think that that's probably my biggest, my biggest piece of advice. I love that. That's super inspirational. And I think that my last sort of little nugget that I just want to tack on to the end of that is just like knowledge depreciates if it's not shared. I think that has been a really valuable lesson that I've learned is like, you know, and I see that so much in like, you know, probably more so in the commercial sphere actually is like seeing people who are like crushing it, making amazing work and not sharing any of like what they've learned. Uh-huh. But then in three years, two years, one year, five years, whatever it is, it's going to become irrelevant. Like there's going to be new techniques. It's going to be new things. And like whether you're monetizing it, creating a course or just sharing it with your peers, because like, why wouldn't we want the whole industry to be better? Yeah. Like, I think that is like a big thing. And I can't even, I think that might've actually come from my friend Jai, but like, you know, somewhere along the line, but yeah, realizing that, 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 that knowledge depreciates when it's not shared. So I think like sharing with your friends, sharing with your people in your community, sharing with the people in your industry is like super important because, you know, we're all, we're all doing the same thing. We all want to make cool, cool stuff. Absolutely. So. And that just feeds right back into just being a good person. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> and I'm not perfect at that. I'm still working on that as well. But, you know, Isn't I think it's a, it's a good, it's a good practice. You know, 100%. even doctors are practicing. So why aren't we? Absolutely. Definitely. I love that analogy. <laughs> so if our listeners would like to find out more about you, your course, they'd like to get in touch with you and chat some more. Andy, how can they do that? Okay. Amazing. So I've got a few things you can check out. Um, first of all, you, uh, if you're interested, if you're a wedding photographer, if you're already a videographer, if you're, you know, if you just have a camera and you want to learn a new thing and you've found yourself here on, on, on NinjaCast, um, you should check out momentsinaminute.com. That's my filmmaking course. Um, we have like well more than 40 episodes in there by the time you guys are listening to this. Um, yeah, we've, we've, had 40 episodes up in there for the last little while. We've got a load of awesome crew kind of joining in all the time. And, and um, yeah, it's basically like a little community. So that's where you can come to learn filmmaking from me and what I've kind of experienced and learned from traveling around and shooting a bunch of stuff. Um, but not the, not just that learning off each other. I mean, we've created this network and this kind of like, you know, little tribe where everyone's sharing all the stuff that they've learned. They're sharing the films they're working on. They're sharing the challenges that they're coming up against. So, and it's so cool, like seeing the diverse kind of range, you know, that's in there, you know, we've got, you know, one week I've got someone sharing a film and the challenges that they have come from like a commercial film for a tourism board. And meanwhile, I've got another crew member in another, literally in another part of the world, um, sharing an isolation film where they've just been in isolation for two weeks because of COVID. Mm -hmm. And so it's so cool seeing everybody just using the internet to come together and share that stuff. And, and yeah, there's so much good content on there and and we're really stoked that we've, we've pulled it together and and made it happen. So check out moments in a minute.com if you want to learn to make films with me. And um, yeah, like I said, one more little nugget with that is we jump on every two weeks and do a little live stream and, and um, everyone jumps on a zoom call and we just chat and hang out and ask questions. So, that's probably the most valuable part of the whole thing. Um, so check out that. And um, if you want to check out my commercial work, you can check out feelin.io, which is F 
E-L-A-N dot I-O. So that's actually the etymology of the word feeling and the reason I make films. So I'll leave it at that. Amazing. Thank you so, so much for joining us, Andy. I've loved every single second. I am definitely going to be checking out moments in a minute. So everybody else sure as hell better do. So thank you so much again for your time. Thank you for joining us. And hopefully I'll be able to catch you soon. No problem. Thanks so much, Sally. Thank you for (laughs) for chatting to me. That was awesome. Bye. See ya. Bye. Okay guys, that's everything from me today. Thank you so much again to Andy for joining us on the show and sharing so many incredible tips with you guys. Things that I know that I'm definitely gonna be putting into use in my business, so I hope that you do too. If you'd like to see the show notes, you can head to www.studioninja.co forward slash episode 25. Please don't forget to rate us on the podcast platform that you're listening on. A little bit of love goes a very long way. I'll see you next time. Thanks for listening to this episode of NinjaCast, brought to you by Studio Ninja. Beautifully designed and super easy to use, Studio Ninja will help you manage your leads, clients, shoots, invoices, contracts, workflows, and so much more. To learn more or start your 30-day free trial, go to www.studioninja.co.